In a remote period of American history, there was among the high hills not far from Tarrytown a drowsy little Dutch settlement long known as Sleepy Hollow. There are some who say that this enchanted region was bewitched by a high German doctor. Others say that an Indian wizard held his powwows here. Certain it is that some power held a spell over the minds of the good people. The whole neighborhood abounds with local tales of haunted spots and twilight superstitions, and the most fearsome spirit of all, the Headless Horseman. Now it happened that a very peculiar schoolteacher came to Sleepy Hollow. His name was Ichabod Crane. And to see him striding along with his tattered clothes fluttering about him, one might have mistaken him for the specter of famine descending upon the earth. His schoolhouse on a crisp winter day buzzed with the low murmur of his pupils' voices, interrupted now and then by the authoritative voice of the master, accompanied by the crack of a burnt stick. Oh. Ichabod's scholars were not spoiled, and all of this he called doing his duty. He was not, as you may have imagined, one of those cruel potentates of the school who joy in the smarting of his subjects. He administered justice with discrimination rather than severity. When school hours were over, he would often walk a student home, especially the ones who had mothers who were noted for the comfort of the cupboard. Knowing that his rustic patrons were apt to consider schoolmasters as mere thrones, he would often render himself useful and agreeable. Then, late at night, sitting by the fire, he listened to old Dutch wives' tales of ghosts, goblins, and haunted fields. especially the tale of the headless horseman. While listening, all snug by the chimney, Ichabod was only mildly apprehensive. But afterwards, on his walk homeward, what fearful shapes and shadows beset his path. Among Ichabod's musical disciples was Katrina van Tassel, the daughter and only heir of a substantial Dutch farmer. On his way to her house, Ichabod rolled his great eyes over her father's fat meadowlands. In his devouring mind's eye, he pictured to himself every duck roasted succulent brown. Each little pocker with an apple in its mouth. Strutting turkeys on plates swimming in gravy. How he sighed and yearned for the blooming Katrina Van Tassel. Who would inherit all these domains?
Ichabod's most formidable rival was Brom Bones, who was the hero of the countryside and Katrina's tutor. Ichabod loved to watch her tender face form sweet round vowels. Brom fumed with jealousy, but he knew he could not regain Katrina's affections by physically assaulting an obviously weaker opponent. So he employed his natural inclination for fun and mischief. Katrina sent Brahm away. Brahm left, but he vowed revenge. Ichabod rejoiced. Katrina had brushed aside the main impediment to his pursuit of her affections. Some time later, Ichabod was handed a note. An invitation to attend a party at the Van Tassel Mansion. Ichabod imagined himself in the true style of a cavalier. He saw an admiring Van Tassel bestowing upon him his total wealth. He was certain that tonight he would win the heiress hand. Ichabod, gallantly mounted on a borrowed steed, lurched along toward the Van Tassel estate. When he entered, the conquest of his heart was complete. A world of charms burst upon his enraptured gaze. Not those of the bevy of buxom lasses, but the ample charms of a genuine Dutch country table. Ichabod was a peculiar creature, whose spirits rose with eating, as some men's do with drink. Ichabod prided himself on his dancing as much as on his vocal powers. Not a limb nor a fiber about him was idle. To see his loosely hung frame in full motion, clattering about the room, you would think St. Vitus himself was whirling before you in person. He was the admiration of all present, except Brom Bone. When the dance was at an end, Ichabod was attracted to a group of older folks who sat and doled out their wild and wonderful legends. Many dismal tales were told about funeral trains and cries and wailings. Some mention was made of the woman in white who haunted the dark glen at Raven Rock. She was often heard to shriek on winter nights before a storm. Seeing Ichabod trembling in every limb, Brom Bones immediately added the tale of his own, an encounter with their favorite specter, the headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow. He affirmed that returning one night from a neighboring village, he had been overtaken by the midnight trooper himself. He raced home. And just as they came to the church bridge, the headless horseman bolted and vanished in a flash of fire. To Brom's satisfaction and delight, Ichabod was terror-stricken. Ichabod lingered behind, according to the custom of country lovers, fully convinced that he had won Katrina's heart. What passed between them, no one knows. But something went wrong. Was her encouragement of the poor pedagogue all a mere sham to secure her conquest of his rival? Ichabod, heavy-hearted and crestfallen, pursued his way homeward. It was the witching hour. All the stories of ghosts and goblins now came crowding upon his recollections. The night grew darker and darker. He had never felt so lonely and dismal. He was, moreover, approaching the very place where many of the scenes of the ghost stories had been laid.
Suddenly, a strange sound caught the sensitive ear of Ichabod. In the dark shadow of the grove, he beheld a huge, misshapen, black, towering mass, like some gigantic monster ready to spring upon him. Ichabod burst forth into a fervent psalm tune. Hear our voices joyously sing this fervent song. Ichabod was momentarily relieved until he cautiously opened one eye and spied a horseman of large dimensions trotting alongside. Ichabod was never again seen in that region. Many stories were called to mind and considered and compared. But in the end, the old Dutch wives, who are the best judges in these matters, maintained that Ichabod was spirited away by the headless horseman. And to this day, it is a favorite story often told about the neighborhood.